Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well. We're going to dive into some really important information in this one. So first up, I have this video linked in the top of the YouTube video description. If you are in the crypto asset class, this is an absolute must watch. I know it is 48 minutes long and most people don't even want to watch a long video, but this information is just that good. So I have this video linked in the top of the YouTube video description put out by Real Vision's YouTube channel of Raul Pal, basically making the argument and sharing the thesis of the biggest macro trend in history. And whether we call it the next cycle or the super cycle, this is the potential of Web3. So I'm going to go through a few of his screenshots and give some cliff notes, but please watch that full video. And friendly reminder, nothing shared in this video is financial advice, but I want to show you some very interesting correlations that they point out with the liquidity model they have for the Bitcoin price chart and the crypto asset class. So to speed through this, we have crypto users versus internet users. So today, the internet has over 5 billion users. The crypto asset class, according to their estimates, is around 500 million. So I'm not sure today if we have 400 million or 500 million global crypto users and assuming that we grew at the same annual growth rate that the internet did and keep in mind the crypto asset class is growing at a faster rate that would be 1 billion users in 2025. And the crazy thing is that this forecast on the highest potential by 2030 would be 4 billion users. So long story short, he sees a bunch of liquidity to flow into the crypto asset class and we'll explain why. So right here he has the log channel for the Bitcoin price chart and this forecasts $270,000 potentially in Q4. And using this liquidity model, he sees substantial upside for crypto into 2025, potentially a topping pattern in the second half of the year. So if you're interested to learn more, you definitely need to watch the full video in terms of time expectations, but just looking for liquidity to go up. We don't need a massive influx of liquidity, we just need liquidity to be in an uptrend. He points out the last three cycles of the Bitcoin price chart in tandem with this liquidity, also pointing out the crypto seasons. And looking at the last three cycles in this brown color or crypto fall, we can see that is usually around the time when the topping structures formed. So we did it here, we did it here, and we did it here. And we're not quite there yet. So he explains in detail that the NASDAQ has a 97% correlation to the total liquidity index, and the NASDAQ outperforms it, just like Bitcoin. And the Fed is essentially using that liquidity to pay for the growth in debt, and this is debasing the currency. And there are two numbers that I found fascinating. The Global Liquidity Index, essentially all these central banks, has an 8% annualized growth rate. And this is debasing the currency, also called the hidden tax. And global inflation is estimated to be around 4%. So 8% for the debasement of currency and 4% for global inflation. That is about 12% in total. And as he explains, that is the in quotes hurdle rate for any investment just to break even. So let's think about this through the lens of a traditional investor, those that are holding bonds or the S&P 500. You need to make 12% per year just to break even. And you can observe this over the long term with the debasement of currency and inflation combined. And hey, if I were in my 60s right now, I had a huge fund or savings just accruing interest in the S&P or bonds for decades, I'd be a happy camper. I wouldn't care about Web3. Compounding gains for 40 years, making 5% in a year or over 10% in a year, that's sitting pretty. But the reality for younger generations is far different. So I get it, if all of this sounds crazy or too good to be true, if you believe that crypto is a scam, it's not going anywhere, that's fine. But I personally believe that crypto is going to be one of the biggest wealth transfers in our lifetime. Just because something takes a long time doesn't mean it won't happen. And everybody today in Web3, those that believe in Web3, talk about it, we're crazy. And as the saying goes, crazy is often being right too early. And why do I believe in the potential of Web3? Because looking at other tech shifts, they took decades. And I just want to emphasize, if we are anywhere near, even if we're below these projections by 2030, this is life-changing. A $16 trillion business opportunity by 2030. The high case right here, $68 trillion by 2030. And the total tokenized market to be 10% of global GDP by 2030, even if it's 5-9%, to that's huge. Even Ripple and Medico's prediction of a $10 trillion crypto custody market by 2030 sounds crazy, and that is still a fraction of the global equities market size. So when you have firms like BCG, Ripple and Medico, the WEF, all sharing very similar projections, I'm paying attention. We know last cycle, from the high to the low, the crypto asset class reached a perfect 4.236 Fibonacci extension right around 3 trillion. Notice, multi-year bear market crashed to the lows during March 2020, crypto is a scam, and just a year or two later, everybody's perspective was different. 2022, crypto is a scam, assets are at their lows, or even altcoins that are at their lows today, crypto is a scam. But historically, when Bitcoin is pushing to all-time highs and alts run, everybody changes their mind. We know Brad Garlinghouse's prediction by the end of this year for 2024 for the crypto asset class to reach $5 trillion, that's essentially the size of the cloud market today. Along with Raul estimating the cycle top to be between $10 trillion to $12 trillion whenever that cycle top takes place. 
So in theory, for the crypto asset class to even get up to a $5 trillion market cap, that would require Bitcoin to go up significantly more. For a $2 trillion crypto market cap, Bitcoin would be around 100k, 2.5 over 120k. A $3 trillion market cap would be 150k. So I listed these levels below just to look at. So we know Bitcoin is the king of the market. The higher Bitcoin goes, historically, the higher potential alts have. Bitcoin dominance is around 54%. We've seen it around 90% before and the all-time low around 35%. So 35%, 50%, 70%, or 90% of that market share. So when I'm looking at these market cap valuations for Bitcoin, what percentage will Bitcoin dominance be and how will it fluctuate and how much of that money will be in alts? And I also want to emphasize it's not always just Bitcoin's money rotating to alts. It can be new capital or new liquidity inflows. And the crypto markets are cyclical. So looking at Bitcoin for over 10 plus years, I'm just waiting for the next cycle. For Bitcoin to draw its first major move into all-time highs like we've seen every few years. The longer it takes to see that first major move, if we chop or pull back a bit or just consolidate sideways, the more doubt and fear there's going to be. Bitcoin's volatility index is still low. I showed the Pi cycle, the stock to flow model, all types of indicators basically making the argument that Bitcoin's volatility index needs to increase and so does Bitcoin's price. If we haven't missed all season, it just hasn't happened yet. I wish I could make it go like that, but I just have to wait. So Rao's video was amazing, so much good information. So bottom line, when we see Bitcoin draw its first major move past that 73, 74k level, then I'm excited. That's the big piece of confirmation that we're waiting for. And looking again at the Bitcoin monthly price chart, so today versus 2017. Comparing the monthly RSI in this orange EMA, this is the 8th month EMA. Are we going to see that first major move for the Bitcoin price chart in all-time high sooner or later? If we know that 2017 broke into all-time highs, it came back down and about two months later did that first major move. The longer we're in the structure, below the all-time highs, or even wick down to the 8 EMA, the more fear there's going to be. So I just wanted to run through that guys, we will see the volatile road ahead, but I believe the next cycle is coming. So with election years and all types of considerations, I have a huge problem being a perma bear. And not financial advice, but I personally believe even if Bitcoin takes a little longer or comes back down, we've already endured the worst of it in 2022 like previous cycles. So I personally have a lot of trouble being a perma bear here. I know what it's like to be holding assets at lows. I know what it's like to see assets go up a lot and I'm like, yes, and then it crashes again. But I also know what it's like to make sure that I am bullish enough and I can endure it long enough to be here for next cycle. And will I be holding my alts and accumulating any assets that are down as I wait for this cycle? Yes. Since 2017, I'll be making the most of it during the good days and the bad days. And just like Kevin O'Leary believes, the crypto asset class will be the 12th sector of the S&P. I do too. And the main thing that helps me keep that long-term perspective, because if you don't have a long-term perspective, you can't be an investor is researching and focusing on the macro trend, looking at the weekly and the monthly time frame. If that trend is intact, I just have to wait. And as we know, this space is truly hero or zero. It's either going to be the biggest wealth transfer in our lifetime or it's nothing. And I don't believe it's going to be nothing. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Big thanks to all that like and subscribe. And I also wanted to let you guys know I'll be back on YouTube sometime by the end of the first week of May. So hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.